to give cheer on the way so my toil will be o'er and the rest on the shore where the night has been turned into day out in the beautiful paradise valley by the side of the river of life out in the valley the wonderful
amin. Ang uh, buhay na ito na siyang uh, pinahiram mo sa amin. At muli, Ama, sa oras na ito ay nandito po kami para sambahin ka sa Espiritu at sa katotohanan. Maraming salamat po, Ama, sa panibagong buhay at kalakasan na kung saan, Ama, ay ibibigay po namin ang aming 100% sa aming pagsamba sa oras na ito. Tulungan niyo po ang bawat sa amin at uh, ihanda ang aming mga puso sa mga ganitong gawain na tanging kayo lamang po, Ama, ang aming mapurihan sa oras na ito. At dalagin po namin, Ama, ang gagamitin mong uh, minsahero na siyang uh, magbabahagi uh, ng iyong salita, Ama. Ay uh, may turo niya, Ama, ang lahat ng mga bagay na ito na siyang uh, pagkain ng aming spiritual na katawan. Maraming maraming salamat po, Ama, sa mga bagay na pinagpalumin po sa amin. At uh, ibinabalik po namin sa inyo ang lahat ng aming pagpapasalamat sa oras na ito. At kalakit dito, Ama, ang paghingi po namin ng kapatawaran ng lahat ng aming mga pagkakasala na aming nagawa sa iyong banal na harapan. Ito po ang mga aming dinadalangin sa pangalan ng aming Panginoon Yesus. Amen. Amen. Happy Lord's Day po to everyone. Welcome to NLX Church of Christ. And it's a joy and a great privilege to be back on the pulpit and share with you God's Word today. I believe we have... Uh, a lot of visitors today, and some of our members are not yet here. We're done with the book of 1 Corinthians, and our theme today, as you can see from our uh, carpooling, has been changed. For the next Sundays to come, we will be uh, talking about in our Bible study, the book of Ephesians. Uh, the my title there is Our Spiritual Blessings in Christ. You got it? And of course, I'd like to say Happy Lord's Day too to all those who are viewing us on the internet. We are recording this for them. For our internet radio community and I'm sure uh, a lot of them are anticipating our Sunday worship and also our discussion on the book of Ephesians. Well, thank you so much for being here and hopefully you have your Bibles ready with you. You have your pens. You have your paper. If you don't have any paper, we have paper here. If you want to jot down notes. And if you don't have any Bible, our Bible students will provide you with Bibles here. And who are first time here in NLEX Church of Christ? There are a lot. Ayan. Where are you, Rachel? You're from Midtown? Good. Baka, di, baka hinahanap kayo doon. <laughs> Ayan si Jesus, si Demi. Oh. Who else are first times here? Si Jael is first time here. Welcome, Jael. One of our uh, elite graduates of our... We have Bibles here, so... This is a Bible study, so we expect you to interact with us and ask questions regarding what we're talking about. No? We, we are moving into next seri a next uh, series of lessons that we entitled Spiritual Blessings in Christ. So uh, if Aris is ready, can you uh, display off our uh, PowerPoint presentation on this? And all, as, as always, in the usual fashion, I, I am the opener of the series, so <laughs> so I am with you today again to uh, discuss and uh, bring to your attention the book of Ephesians. And let me just promote to you, we are broadcasting every day on 97.5. That's an FM radio station here in Baguio City from 9 to 11. And in the evening, if you still are not... Uh, Contented with our broadcast in the morning, we are broadcasting over at the internet. And probably in the entire Philippines, we are the only ones doing that. So we have a frequency on internet. It's called MixLR.com. You just log into MixLR.com slash rescue broadcast. And you can hear us live with crystal clear audio uh, by 8 p.m. going to 11. And soon we're going operate that 
uh, from morning till evening. So watch out for that. Yesterday, last night, we, we broadcasted together with a new uh, partner on, uh, in broadcast. We introduced to the community si Coach D. Yan. I, I hope that some of you have listened. So it was his first time to broadcast, so he was kind of nervous. All right. Okay. So we're ready. We're, we're going to talk about the book of Ephesians. And uh, we entitled the entire series from here on. Uh, I'll be discussing chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. Right? And uh, chapter 1, verse 1 to 14. And I entitled this, The Difference. Can you forward it, Aris? Chapter 1 to 14. So you can ask questions, you can stop me at any time as usual, and we are going to uh, address your concern. Any questions will be always welcome. Right? I entitled this, The Difference. Uh, as I'm reading the entire book of Ephesians, I can, I can really imagine the difficulty of Apostle Paul in this letter when he wrote this to the, Corinthia, to the Ephesian Christians. <clears throat> He was telling them that you are different. And those of you who, who might have read the book of Ephesians will actually see this. Okay? Christians are made different. We are separated from the world. And we are placed in, in a, in a uh, how do you call this, in a boundary called the church. In the book of Ephesians, you could see how how God had planned all these things. He planned it from the beginning, before the foundations of the world. And uh, as you read the book of Ephesians, you would realize that uh, all those who were redeemed by Christ, all those who have been saved by Christ, were placed in a uh, territorial boundary called the church. And wherever we are, that difference that we, that we are, you know, that God planned for us, should, should shine bright in every place that we are. Dapat makita sa atin yung pagkakaiba natin sa mundo. And uh, I, I am really, I appreciate so much this letter of Apostle Paul to the church at Ephesus. Because if you look at that place, um, can you forward it? Let's have a little background. If you look at that place, you would realize that it's so difficult to be different there. Right? So here is the, the modern day map of Ephesus. It's, it's in Turkey. Any, anybody of you has uh, traveled to Turkey? Wala pa, ano? Including me. Ayan. So uh, you could see here's the same Ephesus that we have today and the same Ephesus uh, in, the ancient, in the ancient world. Can you move forward? This is the uh, Bible map wherein you can see Ephesus. It's still the same. It's a port city. And uh, it boasts of uh, an artificial harbor. Uh, those that developed uh, Ephesus during the time of Alexander the Great made an artificial harbor here. Uh, it's a port city, which means if it's a port city, then uh, merchandise from different parts of the world are coming there. And it's the gateway towards the entire Asian province. Ephesus is just a city in the, in the province of Asia during the Roman Empire. And Paul was on the other side. Paul was uh, Cilicia here at the far end. So it's, it's, according to historians, it's the gateway for commerce in the entire Asian province because of the port, uh, the artificial harbor uh, that the Greeks made. So it was very developed. And, uh, you know, principle will tell us if uh, a city is developed, then sin will proliferate there. As we progress, then sin will always be there. Okay? It's, it's, it's like uh, already a principle. Pag masagana ang isang lugar, then maraming kasalanan. Alright, so let's, let's move. I just want you to look at the map uh, so uh, you know where Ephesus is. Okay, let's continue. All right. Aside from the harbor that is artificial, it's artificially made. Parang yung sa if you if you can go to 
if you see uh, yung MOA, uh, Mall of Asia, yung harbor na yan is artificial because it's reclaimed. Before, it's just a sea. But they made an artificial harbor ngayon and uh, the original plan before was to put the, the sports complex, Philippine sports complex there, pero ngayon binenta nila eh. And uh, yung mga businessmen bought parts of the land and turned it into a commercial hub. At maski si Henry C. bought uh, a, la, a, a huge portion of that reclaimed area, it's now Mall of Asia. So parang ganun din yung ano. The, the, the intention was to, to open the gates for commerce and trade in the city of Ephesus because of this. You know what this is? Aside from that artificial harbor, Ephesus is known for this temple. The temple of Artemis. That's the Greek name, Artemis. But uh, the Roman counterpart is Diana. Right? Any one of you, his name is Diana? Diana Zubiri? <laughs> Yun ang first, uh, first name that came out from your mind, ha? Diana Subiri. Alright, so, Ephesus is well known for this. Uh, and uh, the reason, uh, it's full of mysticism. In Acts chapter 19, it's there. It's full of mysticism. The reason why they are uh, progressing is because of this. They have the goddess of love there, whose name is Artemis. The, the Roman counterpart is Diana. And you know, uh, the most prominent feature of Diana is what? Ano yung most prominent feature ng God na to? Yung boobs niya. You know? Like si Diana Subiri. Si Diana Subiri, dalawa lang. But itong goddess na ito, who is the goddess of love, ang dami niyang boobs. That is really the idea there. It's because of this. Can you roll? This is their belief. You know, the Ephesian people believes that the breasts of Diana or, or Artemis symbolizes pleasure. And that's the reason a lot of uh, merchants and a lot of people go to worship Diana is because for pleasure. Most especially those who will go uh, on a... Uh, trip to the sea, wherein there will be no women there, just men, before they go to the sea for work to catch uh, a lot of fish, they will have to go to Diana for her blessings. And the breasts of Diana is pleasure. Just like a child. Uh, I've seen people who are already uh, like uh, children who are like seven, eight years old, who are still thumb sucking, right? Nine years old, ten years old. You know, that's the substitute for their mom's breasts because they find pleasure uh, doon sa breast na yon. So, in the absence of the mom's breast, anong ginagawa ng mga kids na ito? Even though they are already 12, 13, 10, diba? they're still sucking their thumb. Thumb sucking, so dependence yon. So, it's pleasurable. And I know men can relate to this. <laughs> diba? It's pleasurable. Uh, another is for sustenance. You know, they go to the temples because they believe in a mysterious way that Diana will sustain them. The breasts of Diana is for sustenance. Diba? For you to have extended life, you need to be breastfed. Parang ganun sa kanila. So that is their belief. It's to sustain them. Thirdly is to what? Nurture them. A child cannot continue growing without nurturance from the mom. So, ganun din yung mysticism nila in, in Ephesus. Uh, they believe that the breast of Diana is the one that nurtures them. So, can you imagine how many breasts she has to feed, you know, the entire citizenry of Ephesus? And lastly, and this is very common to all of us, uh, most especially in the denominational world, they believe that the breast of Diana is the one that gives them, what? Material blessing. And a lot of the denominational people are like that. They come to church for what? For material blessing. And this sets the tone of difference when Paul wrote, the, when Paul wrote this. Sabi niya, iba kayo. Iba tayo. We are different from these people. Can you imagine the, the, you know, the thought that goes inside the mind of Paul as he writes to the Ephesian Christians when he knows 
that these things are happening in a progressive place like Ephesus. It's like Paul writing to the people of Baguio, people of Midtown, and Lex, Baguio Church of Christ, and all the Christians here, he tells them, you are different. You are the church of Christ. And God helps you to be different. It's not that you want to be different from the entire world. It's God that sets the standard and He helps you to be different. That's the case here. God helps us to be different from the entire world. It's not that you have the ability to be different from the, from the world, but it's God who sustains you, who nurtures you, and gives you what? Spiritual blessings. And that's our difference, mga kamsat. That's what Paul is talking about here. The church of the Lord, the church of Christ, is so different from Ephesus, it's so different from Baguio City, it's so different from Manila, it's so different from Los Angeles, and name all the cities in the world, if you are part, if you are in Christ, if He added you to His body, Paul says, you are different. And the Lord will sustain that. He will nurture us with whatever we need so that we can show the world, Brother Manuel, that you are different. How many of you think that way? That when you go outside the street, you tell the world, I'm a Christian and I'm part of the Lord's church and I'm different. Or when you go out, you, you become a common person. When you see your barcada, you, when you join them, right? You immediately transform from being the temple of the Holy Spirit and be just like them. That is the agony of Paul in this letter. Because a lot of Christians are being swallowed up by culture. The world is so strong. The world is strong. And we are weak. But God helps us by giving us what? Spiritual blessings. That is what you and I need so that we can stand up in this world and last until the coming of the Lord. Right? This is in the, the, the introduction of this uh, lesson series. So if you've got any question, uh, please feel free to raise your hand and we'll acknowledge it. All right? Hello kay Brother uh, Gerald. Dito siya. Always remember that Paul was telling the Ephesian Christians, you and I are different. You have to remember that. And it's not, it's not your own working. It's God who sets the tone. He gives you what? Spiritual blessings. Alright? So if you're ready, then uh, let's continue. Any questions so far, mga kapatid? Any question? Alright, let's continue. We Aris. Shing! Alright, so here. Even if you turn yourself upside down, we are... We make the difference. God makes the difference in our lives. So let's continue. The late lang yung aking ano, PowerPoint. All right. <clears throat> Paul opens up the letter with this word. Okay, let's read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Can somebody help me with this? Somebody read. Uh, if you have a, a Tagalog Bible, that's better. If you have an Ilocano Bible, that's a lot, lot better for uh, Lola here. Right? Any one of you who has a. Uh, can I ask uh, uh, the brother of KJ? <laughs> si, si Ken. Oh, all right. Kenneth, read verse 1 and 2. You can probably imagine that Paul already sets the tone here. He called those, those who believe the Lord in Ephesus, he called them what? Saints. Right? The Greek word for saints is what? Hagios. There's a Greek word, mother. Okay? Faithful is pistos. It, it's, a, it's a description of what the saints, is, saints are. Uh, in the recently concluded Baguio Benguet Intercongregational Basketball Tournament, the Summer Basketball League, yung Hagios yung nanalo eh. Baguio Saints. See? But Paul here sets the tone. Immediately, in the first uh, verse of Ephesians, 
Paul says, you are saints. You and I. As we read this, you know, Paul extends his letter up to Midtown, up to Endex Church of Christ, and he tells us, you and I are different. You are called saints. Wow. You understand what a saint is? Malapit na naman po ang pesta ng patay. Di ba? And a lot of people are going to the camp Santo, where they believe that this is a place for the saints. Well, in fact, when Paul wrote this to the Ephesian Christians, he tells them, you are the saint. You and I. This is who we are. We are faithful in Christ. That's a description of what a saint is. You know, they are separated. They were called to be holy. So, in the beginning of Ephesians, you could probably imagine the, the, the tone of Paul. This is our standard. May ako. Kailangan ng breastfeeding. Alright, so, you see, this is our standard. Don't go below that standard. You are saints. You must be faithful in Christ. Right? So, saints, hagios. Hagios po ang ano niyan eh, pagkabasa niyan eh. Okay? So, let's continue. You are transformed in Christ. Before, you are an ugly duckling. But now, you're beautiful. You are transformed because of our... Uh, you, be, be, before, because of our unity with Christ, our union with Christ, we are transformed. We become saints. Right? Any questions thus far? See? Okay, let's continue. Then, how are we now be different from the, from the world? Paul discussed this. Okay? Paul says, we are united in Christ. Somebody reads Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Si Jael, na-miss ko na to eh. Pwede pakilakas mo. Let us give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For in our union with Christ, He has blessed us by giving us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly world. If you're going to uh, look at that passage and look at it as if Paul was talking to us, he tells us that we are united with Christ. The reason why I call you saints is not because you are saint by yourselves alone. You are saint because you are saints because you are united with Christ. It is Christ who motivate, motivates you to change. It is Christ who transforms you into a holy person. And what does it mean to be united with Christ? According to Paul, you and I must accept, you, you and I must acknowledge that a person that is a saint is a spiritual person. A person that is holy is a spiritual person. Okay? So if you are a spiritual person, because of God's plan, you will now have a spiritual father. So you must put that into your head. I'm spiritual and I've got a spiritual father. A physical person has a physical father father or a biological father. I have a father. He's 74 years old and he's sick. You have a father. But Paul says, we are different. How are we different? Paul says, you are spiritual. And if you are a spiritual being in the same manner, in the same fashion as you have a physical or biological father, brother Manuel, sister Leslie, you also have a spiritual father. It's in there in verse 3. And what, what else? Can you uh, go back again, Aris? What else is there? Alright? And he tells us, since we are spiritual and we have a father who is also spiritual that sustains us, that nurtures us, we must be ready to, to have delight in what? In spiritual blessing. Do you see the comparison, mga kabsat? Diba? The efficient people are just physical being. They are just existing. But a Christian inside the Lord's church is a person that is spiritual, has a spiritual father, and always have that delight in spiritual things. You know the term delight? 
Uh, any one of you who can define what what is the meaning of delight? Sa Tagalog, ano ba yung delight? Yung, yung ba malalim dito? Sa Ilocano, yung, if you, hello brother Edwin, welcome. We're talking about Ephesians. Yung nagagalak ka sa mga bagay na, you're excited. When you say delight, you are excited. You want to have these things in your life. You want to, to grab something like this. Yeah. Alright? That is what delight means. That between this and between that, this is special for me. This is very special. And what is special to a Christian, to a saint, to a, to a person who is holy, sanctified, and faithful in Christ? Spiritual blessings are special to us. That sets the difference. Tignan nyo yung mga denomination, kung ano ang mahalaga sa kanila. See, you understand me? Look at the world. They, the, the men today work more than 12 hours in a day. They have high hopes in their dreams. Build big mansions. Drive fasc fascinating cars. Like Mr. Chongsan, who drives almost uh, one sports car after the other. Every day. As you see him walk in the street. Pero nung ninakawan siya ng 8 yards, nang galaiti siya, lumabas ang kabaklaan niya. Did you see that in the internet? He delights in these things. That's why when you take away these things from him, ano mangyayari sa kanya? He will be furious. Let's, let's compare a Christian. If these things, spiritual blessings, are taken away from you, what would be your reaction? Will you be furious also? Pag tinanggal ng Diyos yung spiritual blessings natin, magagalit ba kayo? Eh before kayo mag-share, tinanggal na ng Lord kasi hindi nyo pinapahalaga ng spiritual blessings. Pa? Ganun din sana yung pakiramdam natin para, Lord, this is what I want. I delight in this. That sets the tone. That makes us different. Between material blessings and spiritual blessings, a Christian says, this is my delight, Lord. I don't like that. I may need it, but it does not necessarily mean I like it. Pa? Between pork chop and carrots, diba? I delight in carrots. Although I need this, but it does not necessarily mean that I like this. I like vegetable more than meat. Uh, look at those people who love vegetable. They have good bodies. <laughs> look at us who like meat. <laughs> I delight. Alam ni Brother Edwin yan kasi may canteen sila. No? Meron silang Valencia's place. Do you, can you imagine what I'm trying to tell you, mga kabsat? If you are a saint, then you must acknowledge that you are spiritual. There are Christians who said they are Christians, they are saints, but they do not act like they are saints. And I tell you, it happens all the time. And sometimes in my life, I act also differently from the way God expects me to act. And this is very important for you and for me. We set the difference. God sets the difference. We make the difference in this world. I'm spiritual. I have a spiritual father that nourishes me, sustains me, nurtures me, and gives me what? Spiritual blessings. And I delight in that. That's a challenge for all of you. Do you delight in spiritual blessings? The big question is we don't even know what is a spiritual blessing. And Paul names them here. In Ephesians chapter 1. He lists them down. One by one. God's tools so that He can sustain you, nurture you, so that you can last the distance. He gives you what? Spiritual blessings. Alright? Let's continue. You don't want to ask questions, mga kapsat? You'll make my lesson very easy <laughs> if you don't ask questions. Alright, so, basa ulit natin yun. Let's look at this. Uh, atras, ayan. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every 
spiritual blessings in Christ. That is, if you are going to, uh, to summarize the book of Ephesians in one verse, probably I will choose this. That's why that is our key verse here. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. The church of Christ is powered by God through His spiritual blessings. Kung ang V-card is powered by globe, ang church of Christ is powered by spiritual blessings. So if you reject them, then you are powerless. But if you delight in them, then you are powerful in Christ. Alright? Let's go! What are these spiritual blessings here? Let's read Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 to 6. Volunteer. Ayan. Pabasa natin kay CJ sa kanyang bagong LG phone. Ah, wala ba dyan? <laughs> Kala ko meron ka ng Bible application sa phone mo eh. Alright. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 to 6. What are these spiritual gifts that we are going to talk about that helps us, that nurtures us, sustains us, gives us the strength, spiritual strength that we, so that we can last the distance? All right, uh, Sister CJ, read. Thank you so much, CJ. Let's talk about that. First, Paul talks about what? Adoption. Any one of you who understands what adoption is? Okay. Adoption. Any one of you who would like to volunteer and help me out here? What do we mean when we say adoption? Oh, inampun. Sino sa inyong ampun? Si brother Edwin, your ampun talaga? Wow, very good. I... We share the same thing. <laughs> but who, who is a, you know, by law, a adopted person here? Adopted. Lahat tayo hindi na adopt. Most, most Americans today are adopted because of their, you know, the, the, their lifestyle. Uh, we have a friend, uh, adopted siya. Yung mother niya is inside the jail. But pina-adopt siya. You know, that's why they're returning the favor. They went to the Philippines to adopt a Filipina. Mapalad yung bata, American citizen na. You know, you are not really uh, blood-related. When we say adoption, there is no blood that runs between you, and yet He chose you. When we say, uh, we will adopt, you choose the child. You have the privilege to choose where you adopt, who you adopt, what race you adopt. That, that friend of ours, when they had a mission in the Philippines, they, they, be, they, they, they have a liking for Filipinos. They began liking the Filipino way of culture, our color, our color. They like our color. And so they decided to adopt a Filipina child. See, that's a privilege. When you adopt, you choose. Ayan. Si Brother Arnold yata, adopted, adopted ka, di ba? <laughs> so, it is your liking. I like this child. I want to adopt this. But there is no blood relation whatsoever. That's adoption. In the spiritual sense of it, it is like that. When God adopts us, it's because of our sins that we are alienated from God. We are separated from God. No relation at all. But because of what Jesus did, right? What Jesus did, yung in Christ, everything here in chapter 1, you'd probably see in Christ, in Jesus, in Him. Because of what Jesus did, as our elder brother, He is the one who has relationship with God. Because He has the same substance, the same form, the same nature. But because of what He did, God chose us. He, he used the word chose. Because that is how you adapt. You choose the person whom you adapt. From what place, what race, and whatever criteria you have. Mga kapsat. Okay? So, let's talk about, ikaya nandiyan dyan yan, no? Kita mo. What is the nature of that adoption? Let's uh, uh, continue, Aris. Okay? He says, For He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. That's the nature. 
The nature of that adoption must be according to God. God's standard. That adoption should be holy adoption. Unblemished. Diba? So if you're not holy, then you are not part of that adoption. Those that say we are Christians here and do not accept, acknowledge that he is a spiritual guy, that he has a spiritual father and he delights in spiritual blessings, kabzat, then you are not holy. You fail in that nature. Alright? Okay. So ano pa? Holy and blameless. That is also the criteria of that adoption. It's God who chooses us. This is not predestination, individual predestination, mga kabsat. And if, if, if this is individual, there is a standard. So, yeah, plural. Mm. Absolutely. Okay? Because there are people who tell us this is uh, the theory and the teaching of Calvin. But it's not like that. Alright, so it's God who choose. That's the nature. You don't make the choice. You don't tell God, choose me. God tells you, I, I choose you. Who's that? The church. Why? Because God sets the criteria. What's the criteria? Must be holy, must be blameless. So it's not individual uh, predestination. Because if it's individual predestination, then God can choose any one of you without any standard at all. I, I like you, so I choose you. That's predestin individual predestination. But this one, we, sabi ko nga kanina kay Brother Edwin, eh, we, we have something in common. If you're adopted, then I'm adopted too. Why? Because we pass the standard. And you can be chosen too if you pass the standard. And what's the standard? The criteria? You must be holy and blameless in His sight. So, who are these people? Brother Edwin. John chapter 1 verse 12 will have. Yeah. Yeah. Sabi niya dito, John chapter 1 verse 12. But to all who did accept Him and believe in Him, He gave the right to become children of God. Yeah. Amen. You must first believe Him. And then later on in redemption, you'll find out you have to do something here. Of course. That you become right. About believing, it is uh, the holistic, holistic, uh, holistic uh, sense in the holistic sense. It's not just mental ascent. Yeah, it uh, includes repentance. Absolutely true, yeah. because that is what really uh, the word uh, believe is all about. Because the word here in John chapter twelve, believe and accept. Thank you, Brother Edwin. So you see, that's adoption. You become part of God. The plan was to have a family. The original son is Jesus Christ, but you know, he adopts us. And how he's going to adopt us? We must know that God is the one who chose this. It's not your plan, but it's God's plan. And he has a requirement for this. You need to be holy. You need to be blameless. Now the question is how you're going to be holy and how you're going to be blameless. Even as ni Brother Edwin, you need to believe in Jesus Christ that he can, do, he, he can do it for you because you cannot do it by yourself. Right? Because if you can be holy and be blameless by yourself, you don't need Jesus anymore. You don't need his words anymore. Yeah, okay. They did not become... God's children in any human way, by, by any human parents or human design, they, they were born of God. Yeah. By believing and accepting, you now magsisimula eh. Ayan, this is Sister Cora. Dito po. Ayan. Alright, so you see, we are adopted. How are we going to be different from the world? You must understand that you and I it's not going to be easy to be adopted. It takes a lot of time. Yung friend namin from the States, it took about more than a year or two to be able to adopt the child. There is a process for adoption. And just like that, God's spiritual adoption for us requires a process. 
And He's the one who is processing it, not you. Right? And He sets a criteria, a standard. And that is, if we are to be in the family of God, then you need to be blameless. You need to be holy. And it's the Word of Jesus that takes care of that. Okay, may, may question po mga abzat? Alright, let's continue. A. Okay. Another tool so that we can last the distance, okay, is the spiritual blessing of redemption. Okay, kanina is adoption. Now Paul talks about redemption. Okay, this must have impact in your life. That's why we are studying this. Dapat this should create a great impact in every life of a Christian so that we can set the tone of difference from the world. You are adopted and it's because of Jesus' action for you, His love, we were redeemed so that that adoption should take place. Alright, so let's read Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 to 6. It's 6 to Seven. I. 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 Uh, this, you change that. Six to seven. Ayan. Si uh, Celine, can you read that for me? See, did you hear that, Pops? That's how important the act of Jesus for us. Eh, he died on the cross for what? Just to be uh, pabebe to all of us? Eh, nauso ngayon, eh, magpabebe? Jesus died on the cross para magpabebe lang sa atin? There is so much meaning in that cross. And the, in one of my preachings, I, I tell you, it's a cross that tells us God is just. You know, God is not only good, He is righteous. You're supposed to die on that cross. And God cannot change His law. Every sin should be held accountable. You have to remember that. Every sin in this world that is made, it must be held accountable. It must be punished. Kaya kawawa yung mga hayop before, right? Wala silang kasalanan. Sino may kasalanan? Yung mga Israelita. Pero kawawa ang hayop, di ba? kukunin yung buhay ng hayop, at yun yung pangtubos dun sa kasalanan nila. You see? But God says, that this is too much. This is going way beyond. The sin is just covered here. There must be an ultimate sacrifice for all sin. And that is His Son, Jesus Christ. Dapat tayo yung kasalanan natin nandun And yet, you know, we only know that God is love, but we don't know that God is righteous. You know, yung, yung action ng Panginoon na yun tells us that God is righteous because there should be no sin that should be held accountable and guess what? Who took over our place? Jesus Christ. Did God change His plan? No. He's still righteous. Why? His Son died for you and me. That cross is a cross of righteousness. It's not only a cross of love. But to some Christians who, who tells us they are saint, ang nakikita lang nila sa cross na yon is a cross of love. But no, 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 no. No, that's a cross of redemption. It is you can see the righteousness of God. Katwiran ng Diyos yan. Somebody should die for your sin. And God says, Absuelto ka na. Ito nang walang kasalanan si Jesus Christ. Anak ko, siya ay papako sa krus. Can you imagine that, mga kapsin? Does that have an impact in your life? You're redeemed. Dapat doom na tayo. Right? So what is the manner of redemption? And the effect of redemption here. Let's uh, read. Uh, Aris, it's there. Advance mo. Pa? Redemption was made through what? Through His blood. That's a figure of speech. It means through His death. Because when you're nailed on the cross, your blood will definitely drip down until every ounce of water and blood in your flesh will evacuate you, will get out from you. His blood shed on the cross. That's how you and I were redeemed. Okay? Jesus is interested in your sins. Because Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is spiritual death. And if you're there, then 
You cannot imagine what will happen to you on that day if you are there. Doon sa sinasabing spiritual death. In uh, Revelation chapter 20, verse 14. Right? You cannot really imagine. So Jesus Christ took over and says, Because of my blood, absuel to kana. See? So He's not interested in your financial crisis. He's not in interested in your marital crisis. He's not interested in your social crisis, in your education crisis. Name all crises in the world. He's interested in your sin. Kaya hindi po totoo yung sinasabi ng mga tao, tanggapin mo si Jesus. At babaguhin niya yung buhay mo. He will, he will organize your financial plans. He will take care of your bank accounts. He will take care of your relationship with your wife. Marami ako nakita nung naging kristyano, naghiwalay din silang mag-asawa. Kasi ayaw siya tanggapin ng asawa niya dahil kristyano na siya. It's not true. Ah, kabsat. Jesus is interested in your sin. Because if He did not die for your sin, then you are in grave danger. You must acknowledge that, mga kabsat. If you, do, if you did not die with Jesus in your baptism, then you are in grave danger. Because His death on the cross will not take effect on you. No effect at all. So you need to also die, you need also to be buried, and you need to also have a spiritual resurrection. And that is what sets the difference here. You understand, mga kapatid? Through His blood. Some people could not understand that. It's just a concept. Parang si Jesus ay isang tupa lang. But He is the Son of God. He died for you. So that yung peril, yung, yung danger that is waiting, awaiting all of us, masolusyonan niya. He's interested in your sins. So when you, when you make sins, if you engage in sin, up to today. Diba? Diyon pa rin ang interest niya. Even up to today. It's not interested in your bank account. Death of the Lord Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, in pleasing us, will take effect upon your person. Yes. Okay, then sabi nga ni Pedro eh, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's really true. That's why the cross the death of Jesus on the cross has not take effect on you kung hindi ka magkakaroon ng in Christ. You know? In Christ. How are you going to do it? You must be, you must die with Christ in your baptism, you must be buried with Christ in your baptism, and you must have a spiritual resurrection in the likeness of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then again, I like to emphasize, He did it because of the sin that is engulfing you. Because you would you wouldn't realize the terror that is awaiting us. Right now, kasi ang tao, naiisip lang yung ngayon. But you don't realize the terror that awaits us come judgment day. And that's the reason why He came here. But of course, ba? if you obey the Lord because you have to make Him Lord also, yun ang consequence, yun ang resulta ng pagsunod mo kay Kristo. He will change you because you are obeying Him. You, you'll find out little by little, oy, naayos na yung Mrs. namin, yung away namin ng Mrs. ko. Why? Because you're sharing the Word of God to her. Ba? If the death of Jesus Christ takes effect also in your family, then Jesus will clean everything in your house. But that is not His primary concern. What I'm telling you, His concern is the sin that is engulfing you. Alright? So, uh, ano naman yung tinatawag natin na uh, uh, atras mo nga, Aris? Meron pa akong dapat pag-usapan doon. Atras mo lang. Right. Ito. The effect of redemption. Ano yon? Forgiveness of our sins. You see? That is the effect. What Jesus did on the cross for you and me, that's the one that enables the availability. The forgiveness of sin was made potentially available for everyone who comes to Jesus and says, Jesus, I'm going to follow you and make you Lord of my life. I want to be united with you through my baptism and walk in the newness of life until His coming. Right? That's the result of the redemption. Your sins are blotted away. Zero. You are white as snow. Nakakita na ba kayo ng snow? Dito sa Baguio, pag December, meron. 
Di ba? Doon sa Christmas village. <laughs> White as snow. Clean. O, kaya nga tinawag na saints eh. Di ba? Pero sabi ni John, huwag niyo sabihin hindi kayo nagkakasala. You're still committing sin. But we no longer live in sin. And the moment you commit sin, you realize you have committed sin and you want this sin. You know, if you delight in spiritual blessings, you will reject sin. Lord, I have sinned. Forgive me, says John. I want to remain walking in the light as He is in the light. And the blood of Jesus, His redeeming power, will cleanse us from all your sins. It is made always available, potentially available every day, 24-7. It's the blood of Jesus. As long as you walk in the light and remain in the fellowship. But if you get out of the fellowship, patay kang bata ka. So that's the reason why you need to be here every Sunday. You need to be here. Don't absent yourself when there are opportunities to strengthen your faith. Because isang absent lang ng Sunday yan, next Sunday, tatama rin ka na. Susunod na Sunday, tatama rin ka lalo. Susunod na Sunday, hindi ka na magpapakita. And then finally, you're already lost again, entangled in your love for the world. You see? We set the difference, right? Let's continue. Shing. So, what else do we receive? We receive adoption, we receive redemption, we receive what? An assurance. A guarantee. Right? A guarantee. You know what a guarantee is? Diba yung Pinoy eh, laging gusto niyan, Sister Fe, sure na sure. Magsasama ako niya sa networking na yan, sure ba nakikita ako? Diba? Magkano investment? Sure na sure ba? Diba? Pag ako ba eh, naghulog sa sa St. Peter's, pag namatay ako, may kabaong talaga ako? <laughs> sure na sure, Brad. <laughs> Di ba? Who are you are insured? Di ba? Yung naugali ng Pilipino eh. Gusto niya, sigurista siya eh. But God is also like that. He wants you to be assured that these things will happen in your life. Because He sends, what? The same substance, the same form, the same nature, the Holy Spirit, to dwell in you. He gives you the assurance, the guarantee, the everything you need to last the distance. And that is the Holy Spirit. There. Right? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 8 to 14. Mahaba yan. Isa-isay na lang natin because I don't have much time. Let's continue. Let's talk about the Holy Spirit, which is the most controversial, the most controversial issue in the churches of Christ. I don't know why. Alright? So, I'm just going to read. He has showered us His kindness on us along with all... This is NLT pala. This is a good version for people who are... who would really like to have a mababaw na translation. Okay? Along with all wisdom and understanding. See? God has now revealed to us His mysterious plan regarding Christ. A plan to fulfill His own good pleasure. And this is the plan. At the right time, He will bring everything together under the authority of Christ. Everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For He chose us in advance and He makes everything work out according to His plan. God's purpose was that we Jews who were the first to trust in Christ would bring praise and glory to God. And now, you Gentiles have also heard the truth. The good news that, G that God saves you. And when you believe in Christ, He identified you as His own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom He promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that He will give you the inheritance He promised and that He has purchased us to be His own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify Him. Alright, so let's continue. Let's try to understand those passages there. So, the Holy Spirit is given unto us. You know, for what purpose? Not only as to guarantee us or to assure us, it is the Holy Spirit that helps us transform. Okay? The question is, how is, going, how is the Holy Spirit going to do that? Okay? Let's continue. Aris. How will the Holy Spirit transform us? The Spirit of God is always uh, interchangeably used with the word wisdom and the word understanding. Sige po, alam ko, controversial yan eh. <laughs> Ayun, okay. Madali lang po yan. 
Oh, kasi nakalagay po sa Acts chapter 5 verse 32 it's there. The Holy Spirit is given to those who obey him. When was the first time you obeyed Jesus Christ? On the day you were baptized. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Galatians chapter 3 verse 2. Can somebody read? Si uh, Sister uh, Hannah, Hannah May. Galatians chapter 3 verse 2. See? And again, this is holistic in nature. Kasi pag, uh, sa, sa Greek word, yung definition of faith requires also obedience. Uh, if you go to the deep Greek, di ba? Malalim kasi yung Greek eh. So if you go to the original context of this, this requires action. So people in the days of our Lord, when they talk about faith, they know action is required. But today it's not. <laughs> yeah. 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 Kasi sa Holy Spirit baptism, multi-perform ka ng meron. Absolutely. Eh, hindi ka nakaperform. So you receive the Holy Spirit by believing and obeying in the Word of God. Yeah. That's true. Diba? Kasi wala na yung miracle today. Diba? And you know, whether that's Holy Spirit baptism or baptism by water, you receive the same Spirit. It's the Spirit of God you receive. The only difference is before, during the time of the apostles, in the period of inspiration, the manifestations of the Holy Spirit is ever-present during their period. But today, it's already ceased. As early as the second century, it was no longer there. The church fathers can attest to that. Sila Polycarp, the church fathers in the second century, they can tell you, Irenaeus, wala nang miracles during that time. When John uh, was the last apostle to die. Right? So, it's synonymously used with wisdom and understanding. You go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 downwards, you, you could probably see there. God sent His Spirit to us so that we will know the things that are of God. Talks about understanding. That's how the Holy Spirit is going to help us transform. Before, our, our minds were darkened. But today, sabi niya gano, you were enlightened. How? God gave you understanding. Diba? How many of you are not yet in the spirit of understanding? Okay? okay. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Pinag-aralan natin yan, di ba? Before. God gave us the Spirit, His Holy Spirit, so that we can know the things that are of God. Verse... Uh, 12, 10 to 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have made been uh, freely given to us by God. See? So it's synonymously uh, used or interchangeably used with the word wisdom and understanding. That is how the Holy Spirit helps us. Before, we don't understand. But there's a lot of difference between the brother Ed you know 10 years ago, and the brother Ed you know today. Because I am full of wisdom, I am full of understanding with regards to God's Word. Kaya kailangan nyo pa rin yung salita ng Diyos. Okay? During the time of the Apostle, in the period of the direct operation of the Holy Spirit, without the Word of God, they can understand. But today, you need the Word of God to understand. Okay? Let's continue. Paspas tayo. Alright. So, God says here, what you need to understand also is God's plan. Don't you know it's here in Ephesians, the plan of God? Okay? Before He sent Jesus Christ and then when He's coming back, it's also here. Alright? So, let's look at that. Look at the nature of that plan. According to Paul, it's mysterious. Okay? What do you mean when you say mysterious? Yan ang gustong-gusto ng tao, mysterious. Eh. When something is mysterious, ang daming chismoso doon. Tama, di ba? Ang daming chismoso. Gusto nilang malaman eh. Kung ano yung mystery. Di ba? Nung merong 
Bakla doon sa La Union. Ang dami nagpunta doon ah. Si anong pangalan noon? Yung nagmi-Milagro? Si Judiel, oh, bakla. Ngayon nag-artista din. Pero hindi sumikat. Di ba? Ang dami nag-pilgrim doon sa San Fernando La Union dahil sa akin. Mysterious. God's plan has also that type of uh, uh, nature. But He revealed, he, he, he made it mysterious so that He can reveal it. Because the meaning of mysterious originally in its Greek counterpart is mysterion, musterion, which means to shut them out. Secret. But He revealed, He made it mysterious so that He can reveal He can reveal it to people who seek Him. There is a promise. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it should be open unto you. Ask and you receive. The people in the Old Testament do not have this privilege of understanding. Even Job did not know, does not know that when he die, he will resurrect. Job 14 verse 14. But when Jesus resurrected, we know that the mystery has already been revealed. That you and I will be made resurrected during the time of the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, there is a plan here. It's a mysterious plan. But it will not remain a mystery to those who will seek. But to those who will pervert the gospel, it will remain a mystery to them. It will be unknown to them. But to those who are chosen, to those who would like to go to the standard of God, to the church, here also in Ephesians it says, it is the church that will reveal the manifold wisdom of God. You and I, that's our duty. We will receive the manifold wisdom of God and we will proclaim it to the world. You see, it was made a mystery so that we can see the value of the, cho the choosing of God through the church. All right? We have that privilege. It's revealed to us. Second, it's not for your own pleasure. The plan of God, Jesus' death on the cross and His reign, supreme reign, <coughs> all over the world, is not for your own pleasure. Some people come to church for their own pleasure, right? Some people become pastors for their own pleasure. Ayaw nilang mahirapan. Sino sa inyong takot mahirapan? Sino sa inyong takot magutom? Maraming takot magutom. Kasama na kami doon. <laughs> Di ba? Mahirap magutom eh. Walang lakas. Pero ano yung tinuturo dito ng ating Panginoon? He will sustain you. He will nurture you. Diba? If you are part of that people who are in Christ, dapat mag tayong takot. Magutom. It's not for your own pleasure. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16, you bear the name of Christ. You are Christian because God wants you to suffer and this will glorify Him. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16. Right? Ano pa sabi ito? According to the time of God. It's, it's not according to your time. This, this, all things that are happening, God is in control. He knows the time. You don't know the time. Some people are prophesying the coming of the Lord. They say, Brother Edwin, doomsday will be September 2015. Meron, 20, 20, meron 23, may 25, may 28. Hindi sila nagkakasundo. Kailan ba doomsday? Darating na. But time and again, these people are prophesying. It's coming. Get ready. But they cannot prophesy their death. Right? Do you know the time when you're going to die? Oh. Diba? God is really intelligent. Because we have two problems here. The time of our death and the time of His coming. Whichever which comes first, patay kang bata ka. So what is the Lord teaching here? He teaches us to be prepared all the time. So you see, it's according to God's time. It's not according to your time. The only thing that we can, we can do is to pray and tell the Lord, please come. Maranatha, oh Lord, please come. We are suffering so much, Lord. Just to tell the world we are different. Please come, Lord. But God knows the time, this plan. Right? Any question here? And then before the foundations of the world. God has already known these things before the foundation. You see how God is omniscient here? He knows it. He planned it. He made the plan long, long before. But he knows about the coming of the church. He knows that there will be an endless church of Christ. There will be a Baguio church of Christ. There will be the body of the Lord in Baguio City. Right? Let's continue. 
Konti na lang po ito. So all of this plan, mga kabsan, that God is making, He tells us that my Son, Jesus Christ, is at the centerpiece of this plan. Everything revolves around Him. Can you imagine that? In the Old Testament, if you know the Levitical system, you know, everything revolves around the temple. The temple is the centerpiece of uh, the Israelite worship. But today in the Christian age, you and I must know that God's plan revolves around His Son, Jesus Christ. The Bible's centerpiece is Jesus Christ. It's not the Holy Spirit. So don't argue about the Holy Spirit because that's not the plan of God. The major plan is Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is, is the helper so that He can proclaim Jesus Christ. So don't tell me you want to argue with me about the Holy Spirit. Every time the Bible is open, if, and if Jesus is not proclaimed, it's like reading dust. If we argue about the Holy Spirit, it's like we're reading dust. Because Jesus is the centerpiece of that book. From the beginning till the end. And I'm sure you won't argue with me. So, ang sabi ni Peter, but grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus. It's the Holy Spirit that helps us grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. See? So, it's useless. Those wranglings, those debates on the Holy Spirit is useless. Because after all, it's not the Holy Spirit that we should master. It's Jesus Christ that you need to master. And that sets the difference. The Holy Spirit is just a helper. So that we can set the tone of difference in this world. You understand, mga kabsat? Alright, let's go! Shing! So what is the plan? Here's the plan. That everything in Jesus Christ will be subjected to Him. It's already happening. Don't you see? Sabi nung Philippians chapter 2 verse 12, Every knee shall bow in heaven on earth and even under the earth. Ano kaya yan nandun sa under the earth? Sabi nila sa Itogon, mga minero daw. <laughs> Di ba? When Jesus Christ said, all authority was given unto me when He ascends, the glorious ascension of the Lord in heaven, He already reigns. Wala na pong uh, darating na millennial kingdom, mga kabsa. Because I can see in you that Jesus Christ is reigning in your hearts. Isn't that right? All saints, all Christians, all those who are part of the Lord's church, Jesus Christ's throne is your heart. Everybody will be subjected unto Him. But the fulfillment of everything, the judgment day will come. People will realize, Lord, it's too late. Dapat nung pakita sinunod. Right? That's the plan. And it revolves around who? Jesus Christ. Alright? Let's continue. What, is, what else? Shing! Ito pa, oh. The plan was, if there is a head, there must be a body. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23. And that is, yung sinasabi ni Brother Edwin kanina, predestination. The church is predestined to go where? In heaven. That is the plan. The plan is to establish the church. That's why God says in uh, Psalms chapter 2, verse 7, You, Logos, will be my son, and I will be your father. Now, today, I have begotten you. God will create a family. And those people who are saints, who are holy, blameless, are part of that family. That's the reason why the church must be different from the world. Okay? Fellowship. That's why we're here. Okay? Corporate predestination. You and I. Hindi special si Jisa na siya lang. Siya lang ang predestined. Si Brother Josias, hindi. Hindi pwede. Oh, Kasi hindi siya pinili. It's not like that. Remember, God has a standard. Diba, if Brother Josias would meet that standard, diba, God will choose him also. Uy, kasama ka dito. Why? You believe in my son. 
Diba? You want to be united with Him. You want to be pure like Him. You want to live like Him. Then you are part of this. Then all of us will be predestined. That's in the mind of God. Long before. Can you, can you appreciate that, mga kabsat? Okay? Ang problema if you belong to a wrong church. <laughs> because there's so many pseudo church around. With different beautiful names. <laughs> so to speak. Alright, let's continue. Okay. Ano pa yung plan? You see, it's there. Alam mo, it's the church. Why? Because Paul talks about the Jews and the Gentiles for the very first time being bonded together. By what? By the blood of Jesus Christ. Sino to mga to? It's the church. That's the plan of God. Jews, Gentiles that are alike for the first time. Sino mga hudyo dito? Asal hudyo. <laughs> but that's the plan of God. Hindi ba natupad? It's, did, sabi ni Paul dyan, diba, did, the Jews first the, heard the message and then it went to the Gentiles. What is he talking about? Who is predestined here? The church. Yeah. Because they were questioning Peter. Peter, bakit ka nakasinamuha sa mga hintil? Bawal yan. That is against the law. Sabi ni Peter, I have a dream. Don't, don't judge me. Huwag mo akong sisihin. Sisihin mo ang Panginoon. Bakit? Ito yung sinabi niya sa akin. So, binautismuhan ko para malaman nyo na pwede nyo nang bautismuhan ang mga hintil. See? That's the reason why Peter baptized the Gentiles. Eh, pareho naman yung baptism na nireceive ni Cornelius. Ano yun? Holy Spirit. It worked immediately on them. But why did Peter baptize the Cornelius? Because that's the beginning. That's a reference point. That from here on, sabi niya, God accepted the Gentiles. So I baptized this family so that you can imitate me. You will now baptize even Gentiles. Diba? Okay, let's... So, you know, Hujo, tsaka yung Gentile, kawawa, ito. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Ayan, that's a verse 12 and 13 yan. And what is the purpose of that plan? Why? Why the Jews and Gentiles are bonded together? Bakit namatay si Jesus Christ eventually? Makikita natin, that's for heavenly reason. He's going to give what to us? Inheritance. Sino sa inyo po ang merong, ano na, uh, tinatawag na mana? Meron? <laughs> wow! Oy, magpalakas kayo kay Brother Edwin. Meron siya. Sa Mindanao. Di ba? Will and Testament? Di ba? Sino sa inyo ang may inaasahan ng Will and Testament aside kay eh, Brother Edwin? Wala pa? Wala? <laughs> Kami din mahirap lang. Yung nanay ko nagtitinda lang sa pier. Sobrang hirap na. Ang tinitinda niya, barko. <laughs> Pero mahirap lang kami. <laughs> you see, that's the ultimate plan of God. That you and I will get to heaven. Pero, you see, some of us, ito yung question natin eh. We are saints, we are holy, we are the church of Christ. That is our declaration. We are the church of Christ. But most of the time, our actions are not heavenly actions. Most of the time. <laughs> Grabe naman yun. <laughs> diba? Kaya ang sabi ni Paul dito sa Ephesians eh, God sets the tone of difference in our lives and He will sustain you. Bakit ganyan kayo kumakto? As if you are not Christian, as if you will not inherit heaven, mga kapatid. Kaya di bali mag-amoy lupa tayo eh. Eventually, mag-amoy langit tayo. In our actions, mga kapatid, dapat makita sa atin yun that we are redeemed, we are adopted sons of God, dapat nakikita sa atin yung guarantee ng Holy Spirit sa buhay natin. Because eventually, ito yung sinasabi ni Stephen Covey na, begin with the end in mind. What is the end in mind of God? A heavenly inheritance waiting for you and for me. Kaya kahit maghirap tayo dito, mga kapsat, hindi nyo kailangan ng awards, hindi nyo kailangan ng recognition, hindi nyo kailangan ng papuri ng tao. Because kung nakuha nyo na yan dito, ano pang kukuha ninyo sa langit? Wala na. 
So di baling mahirapan tayo. Yan ang totoong kristyano. Because we are anticipating that heavenly inheritance. O sino sa inyong gustong makapiling ang Panginoon sa langit? Dapat mag-ugaling langit kayo dito. When somebody needs help, we help them. It's an opportunity to tell the world, we are different. We are God's people. If there's an opportunity to share the word of God, fire right away. We are different. We are God's people. Kahit gaano pa siya kahirap. Okay, next. Last. So Paul summarizes. Diba? It was Jesus who opened the door. But you have to move. The door for adoption is ready. The door for redemption is ready. The door for the Holy Spirit to dwell in you is ready. And the door for our heavenly inheritance awaits all those people who will come to have faith in Jesus Christ and walk with Him until the end of their lives. Yan ang message ni Paul sa mga taga-Kurinto. And he talks about what? Shane, last slide. Last slide. Talks about the church. So look at this. Saints are common in the church. Ito pong worse eh. We're supposed to be common here. You know what I'm talking about? Every single piece of our blood, our knowledge, what we are, who we are, and why we are chosen by God should be common here. Common knowledge, common faith, common salvation, common hope, common obedience. Everything about us as children of God should be common in the church. And yet a lot of you are fighting in the church as if we are different from each other. Where are we supposed to set the difference? Outside. That is where we're supposed to set the difference. But in the church, mga kabsat, we should be common here. No one is special. I'm not special. In the eyes of God, you are all special. But the way we treat each other sometimes, mga kabsat, as if we are the most special in the church. But I tell you, if you're a saint of God, you are common. We are common here. Pare-parehas lang tayo dito. Walang senior pastor, walang junior pastor, walang bishop, walang evangelist. All of us are servants of God and we are only adopted sons. And we should behave like that. Because out there, that is where we set what? The difference. And ang umaga po. Elected by church leaders or group of people. For so those who would like to obey the Lord Jesus Christ and continue to be holy, uh, you set aside yourself for a holy purpose, then you are saved and you become uh, a children of God. Absolutely true. We don't select ourselves to be saved. It's God who chooses us. God tells you, this guy is a saint. Okay, why? He's doing my will. Alright? So, wala na pong question, mga kapsat. This is the end of the line for me. Happy Lord's Day. God sent His Son, they called Him Jesus, He came to love, He learned for Him, He lived and died.
na po ay dadako mga kapatid sa Lord's Supper ng ating Panginoon Heso Kristo. Uh, ito po ay babasahin ko po sa 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 to 26. Sapagkat ito ang turo na tinanggap ko mula sa Panginoon at ibinigay ko naman sa inyo. Noong gabing siya ipinagkanulo, ang Panginoong Hesus ay dumampot ng tinapay, nagpasalamat at pinirapiraso iyon at sinabi, ito ang aking katawan na inihahandog para sa inyo. Gawin ninyo ito bilang pag-alaala sa akin. Matapos maghapunan, dumampot din siya ng kupa at sinabi, ang kupang ito ang, ang bagong tipan ng pinagpatibay ng aking dugo. Tuwing iinumin ninyo ito, gawin ninyo bilang pag-alaala sa akin, sapagkat tuwing kakain kayo ng tinapay na ito at iinom sa kupang ito, ipinahayag ninyo ang kamatayan ng Panginoon hanggang sa kanyang muling pagparito. Tayo po'y manalangin. Ama namin, maraming salamat sa umagang ito, Ama, na kami po'y tinipon mo upang sambahin ka sa Espiritu at Katotohanan. Ama, maraming salamat sa iyong anak na napako sa krus upang kami po'y malik, uh, mabayaran ng aming mga kasalanan, Ama, nung kami po'y naging, ma, naging malayo sa iyo, Ama, at maging makasalanan sa iyo, Ama. Ama, narito po, Ama, ang siyang tinapay na nagpapaalala sa katawan ng aming Panginoon, basbasan mo nawa ito, Ama, upang kami po'y amay. Malugod po kaming kakain nito, Ama. Ama, patawarin niyo po kami, Ama, sa aming mga pagkukulang o nagagawa naming mga pagkakasala sa iyo, sa isip, sa gawa sa salita. Dalangin po namin ito sa pangalan ng aming Panginoong Heso Kristo. Amen.
Masal po tayo para sa ubas. Ama naming banal, marami pong salamat Ama sa patuloy na pagkabay at sa bagong buhay na inyong ibinigay sa amin. Salamat po muli Ama na kami po inyong tinipon po dito ngayon. Ama, hiniling po namin na binisyonan niyo po ang katas ng ubas na nagpapaalala sa kamatayan ng aming Panginoong Isus. Namatay po siya sa krus para po kami mahugasan at mapatawad po sa aming mga kasalang nagawa. At hiniling din po namin Ama na binisyonan niyo po ang mga tatanggap po nito. Ito po aming sambot dalangin sa pangalan ng Panginoong Isus. Amen. Ayan po, natapos na po yung uh, napakahalagang uh, gawain po natin sa unang isang araw na isang linggo, ang pag-alaala ng pagkamatay, pagkalibing at pagkabuhay muli ng ating Panginoon. Tayo naman po ay dadako sa pagbibigayan. Akin pong babasahin sa 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5 to 7. Ganito po ang kanyang pagkakasabi. Kaya't pina pinakikiusapan ko ang mga kapatid na nauna riyan, upang maihanda ang tulong na ipinangako ninyo. Sa gayon, makikita na talagang kusang loob ang pagbibigay ninyo at hindi sa pilitan. Ito ang ibig kong sabihin. Ang nagtatanim ng kakaunti ay aani ng kakaunti, at ang nagtatanim ng marami ay aani ng marami. Ang bawat isa ay dapat magbigay ayon sa kanyang pasya maluwag sa loob at hindi napipilitan lamang sapagkat iniibig ng Diyos ang nagbibigay nang may kagalakan. Tayo po'y manalangin para sa pagbibigayan. O dakilang Ama, maraming salamat po sa oras nito. Salamat po sa mga biyayang pinagkakalag niyo po sa bawat sa amin. Muli Ama, nagpapasalamat po kami sa oras nito na muli po namin gaganapin ang aming pagbibigayan. Nawa Ama, maging bukal po sa aming puso ang aming pagbibigay na may kasiyahan Ama. Yun din po Ama, ang Patuloy niyo pong ibalik ang salaping malilikom sa mga magsisipagbigay at patuloy niyo pong basbasan ang salaping malilikom na ito at magamit lamang po ito sa pagpapalago ng iyong iglesia at sa pagpapalaganap po ng iyong gawain naman. Ama, muli po kami nagpapasalamat sa araw na ito at 
Patuloy po kaming humihingi ng kapatawaran sa aming mga nagagawang kasalanan at kakulangan. Ito po ang aming samod na langin sa matamis sa pangalan ng aming Panginoon sa Kristo na aming tagapagligtas. Amen. Naglalaban-laban sila, nag-a-argue sila kung sino ang greatest among them. Actually, kung mapapasa natin, no? Napasahin natin sa Matthew chapter 18, 1 to 5. Matthew chapter 18, 1 to 5. Eh, ikon ko na lang, eh, please. Eh, summarize ko na lang yan. At saka Luke chapter 9, verse 46 and 48. So, Matthew chapter 18, 1 to 5. And Luke chapter 9, 46 to 48. Yan po ang verse natin. You could see there that the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ were arguing among themselves. Who will be the greatest among us? 
O siyempre, eh walang magpapakwan, walang magpapakuli sa bawat isa. Ako, 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 ganun siguro. Kaya nag-argue na sila. Sabi siguro ni Pedro, ako ang pinakamatanda dito. O ako ang pinakagreat. Kasi kung may minsan, akala ng tao, siya na yung pinakamatanda sa isang grupo, siya na yung dapat talagang masunod. O di ba? Ayun ang greatness in his perception. O kung sino yung pinakamalaki, o wala ka, susuntukin ko kayo, bago yung pinakamalaki sa akin. Ako ang pinakagreat dito. And then, the Lord Jesus Christ was, was watching them. And then they called them. Balikan na kayo dito. And he took a child. Sabi niya, If you will not humble yourself, just like this little child, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And he whoever humbles himself, like this little child, is the greatest in my kingdom. Napakaliwanag yung statement ng Panginoong Iso Kristo. It is not based on our power, it's not based on our ability, it's not based on whatever we say, but it is on the character that the Lord Jesus Christ wants us to be molded for. To be humble in the sight of God and in the sight of man. Bakit yung isang bata eh sinabi ng Panginoon na humble? Bakit? Eh, makita natin yung karakteristik ng bata. Walang itinatanin sa, sa sakit sa kanyang puso o galit sa kanyang puso sa kanyang kapwa. Bakit mo yung bata, mamaya nag-away sila, mamaya wala na, magkasyer na sila sa isang lulipap. Magkaibigan na sila agad. Pero kung yung matatanda, kasi, ah, kumukulo ang dugo ko dyan. That means that you are still babe in Christ. Kaya nga sinasabi ni, ni Brother Ed kanina, eh, eh bakit nag-away, away sa loob ng iglesia? Kasi sinasabi ng Biblia, these are those who are not mature in Christ. Bata pa. Hindi pa nila alam ang tunay kung paano maging tunay na kasunod ng Panginoon Yesu Cristo. And the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ were also like that. We gradually learn to become one of the greatest in the kingdom of God by being humbling ourselves. Yung batang maliit, sabi ng Panginoon Yesu Cristo, unless you become just like this little child, or you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So before you can be the greatest in the kingdom of God, one of the requirements of the Lord Jesus Christ is to become a child of God. O diba? Kinakailangan maging anak ka ng Diyos. Pag naging anak ka ng Diyos, kinakailangan marunong kang magpagpumbaba. And in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 11, may ano dyan eh, may hunding problema doon sa kwan. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, rather kwan. Uh, uh, mga kapatid. Philippians chapter 2, uh, verses uh, 1 to 11. Kung titignan natin dyan, there are also problems in the church. Oh, anong sabi ni Apostle Pablo? Nag-aaway-aaway sila. Everyone thought that he is better than one another. Ay sabi ng Panginoon sa Cristo, ay ng Panginoon, ay ng Apostle Pablo eh. Let this mind be in you who is also in the Lord Jesus Christ. This mind must be in us who the Lord Jesus Christ was being in the form of God. He that took it robbery to be equal with God. But He humbled Himself. Ano ang Panginoon Yesu Cristo? He was God. But He did not took it. He emptied Himself and took the form of a man. He was God. He did not use His power as God. He went down and took the form of a man and lived just like men, like us. What were the sacrifices of the Lord Jesus Christ when He came here on earth? His glory. Kung ikaw ang Diyos, tapos bababa ka, tapos magpapakahirap ka, pagkatapos just for you to be seen by men, that is one of the mystery according to 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And this is the mystery of God that He will took the form of a man and he will be seen by angel. And he will die on the cross. Ganun ang mystery way. I have a classmate during high school when we're talking about the Lordship and the God, uh, the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paano siya maging Diyos? Inamatay siya. Ganun palagi ni na-argue niya sa akin. Nagkatawang tao siya. 
ang namatay ang kanyang katawang tao, ang kanyang pagkadyos, hindi. Kasi nagkatawang tao siya eh. Ano pa siya bago siya naging tao? Yun ang palagi kong tinatanong. Hindi siya pwedeng maging Diyos, sabi niya, kasi namatay siya. Yun naman ang ini-insist niya eh. Kung diba, kasi yun ang dinig nila. Iglesia ni Cristo, ni Manalo sila eh. Ang tawag nyo doon, Iglesia ni Cristo ang tao. O tao lang, si Cristo sa kanila. But the point is, before the Lord Jesus Christ took the form of man, He was God. He humbled Himself, He emptied Himself, and then took the form of a man, and then become obedient until He died on the cross. He died on the cross. Brothers and sisters, just imagine, you were God, and then you took the form of a man, and then those you created put you to death. Grabbing sacrificio. But there was no complaint in the Lord Jesus Christ as He humbled Himself. Wala kang nakita. Nung, nung siya ay sinasaktan, nung siya ay ilalatigo, nung siya ay pinapapos sa cross, wala kang katiting na ma- mabasa sa Biblia na siya ay nagalit, nag-complain, o nagmura na pag ako'y makarabas dito, tahat kayo. Yeah. Ipapatay ko, hanggang wala. Pero ano yung kanyang um, sinabi niya, prayer niya, before his death, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Ganon ang humility ng Panginoon sa Kristo. Kaya, when there are times that we are being uh, persecuted, we will just pray and obey and also adopt the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ that Father, please forgive them for they know what they are doing. We know what we are doing because the Lord Jesus Christ had set us an example to be humble like Him. The second, the second characteristic of a person who is great in the kingdom of God is this. It is found in Matthew chapter 23 verses 11 to 12. Matthew chapter 23, verses 11 to 12. And also, Mark chapter 10, verses 35 to 45. Mark chapter 10, verses 35 to 45. And also, in Matthew chapter 20, verses 20 to 28. Matthew chapter 20, verses 20 to 28. Yeah. Summarize na lang natin ng verse 1, ng verse 2. Uh-huh. Now the disciples also, nag-argue na naman sila. Nag-argue, ano mo, ano mo yung mga bar? Ito yan, yung mga anak ng Diyos, matatalino. Kaya lang hindi pa nakukonform doon talaga sa mind ng Panginoon Yesu Cristo. Kaya meron na naman silang nag-argue na naman sila. Kung sino ang pinaka sa kanila. Hambol na nga sila, siguro, pero hindi pa rin totally yung kanilang greatness kaya meron na naman sila. Posisyon ang kanilang iniisip. Posisyon. O kung mababasa natin dito no, sa mga versikulo binanggit ko, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, went to the Lord Jesus Christ and told Him. Pwede ba? Pati yung nanay nila, kasama nila eh. Salome. Oo, si Salome, kasama nila eh. Oh, pwede ba? Paminoon. When you establish your kingdom, eh yung anak ko, o kami, si James and John, sila nakaposisyon sa kanan at kaliwa. Grabe wow. mga kapan, pero yung very powerful. Kami lang mag-execute lahat ng iyong ikukuman. O kasi kami ang nasa kanan at sa kaliwa mong ministro. The Prime Minister, parang mga ganon. And the Second Prime Minister, wala kang gagawin, upo ka na lang. It's very nice, di ba? O, sabi ng Juan, nung narinig yan ng mga Juan, mga kasama nila, o parang serious, di pwede yan. Pwede, away na siya yung tao, normal na magsiserious, di ba? Eh, sa ngayon naman, eh, sumasama naman kami sa iyo. Bakit hindi kami bibigyan ng Juan posisyon na kanan at kaliwa? Itadalawa lang naman yan eh. Kanan, kaliwa lang eh. Hindi na po pwede. Tamang-tama din yung ambisyon ni James and John. They are the sons of thunder, say. 
Sila yung nagsasabi na, Panginoon, yung mga istor mo dito, sunugin mo na. Ganun ka din yung dalawang yan eh. Na James and John. Sabi ng Panginoon Iso Cristo, dahil nag-aaway-aaway na naman sila, hari nga tayo dito lahat mga alagad ko, at sasabihin ko sa inyo, kung sino talaga ang pinakadakila sa ating kalayaan. Observe ang inyo, you observe. The leaders of the world, They like to be served. They are hunger of power. They like to have power to be imposed on other people. But I will tell you, that is not supposed to be in my kingdom. In my kingdom, the one who is to be the greatest is the one who is the lowest or the slavest of all. The one who serves in my kingdom is the greatest among all. Baliktad, mga mahal kong kapatid, sa ating mundo, ang pinakadakila ay ang pinaglilingkuran. Sa Iglesia ng Panginoon, sa kanyang kaharian, ang pinakadakila ang siyang naglilingkuran. Kaya yan ang dahilan. Sabi ng Panginoon sa Christo, I came here not to, not to be served, but to serve. But the Son of Man has come Not to be served, but to serve and to die as a ransom for many. Napakaganda ng pag-service ng Panginoon sa atin. Buhay niya ang kanyang ibinigay. That is why, naunawaan din yun. Saka na lang yun, nung namatay ng Pahinsu Kristo, sa kanila yun naunawaan. And then one time, uh, before, before the Passover feast, in John chapter 13, John chapter 13, verses 1 to 9. May occasion doon na napakaganda na nangyari. Yung Panginoon Iso Cristo at sa mga pasoles, no, they were sitting together and everybody sa mga apostoles ng Panginoon Iso Cristo were thinking that He is greater than, other, than the other. Mas okay ako sa iyo. Mas okay ako. Kaya nakita ng Panginoon Iso Cristo eh. Hindi maganda na naman ito. And then the Lord Jesus Christ stood up and got a basin or palanggana at sa katwalya at lumuhod siya sa bawat isa nagulat sila tapos pinunasan niya ang paan ang bawat isa that is a custom o na nagsiserve mahalagang custom yan sa mga one, sa mga Jew kasi kung may occasion kayo spiritual eh maghugas ng paa eh marunong yung paa nila walang gustong maghugas ng bawat isang paa ang, ang dapat magugas yung may-ari ng bahay. Hindi mm-hmm. wala yung may-ari ng bahay eh. Yung Panginoon Yesu Cristo, siya na ang nagugas. Nung si Pedro na hugasan ng paa. Sabi ni Pedro, Panginoon, huwag mong gawin sa akin yan. <laughs> Galing mo na si Pedro eh. Medyo pa na si Pedro eh. Kasi di ba si Pedro din nagsabi, Panginoon, hindi ka mamamatay. Hindi ka mapapako sa cross over my dead body. <laughs> diba, diba, siya rin nagsabi niya? Ito na naman. Siyempre, siya maging great, eh, diba? Get behind me. Pedro, eh. Kung doon, hindi ako mayag nahuhugasan mo ang aking pa. Ang sabi ng Panginoon sa Christo, if you will not let me to watch the thing, you will never inherit anything from me. Nagulat si Pedro, Panginoon, kung ganun, Hugasan mong pako, hugasan mong katawan ko, pati yung ulo ko, paliguan mo na ako. Hindi. Ibang class yan, no? And then the Lord Jesus Christ is from the meaning of washing of feet. It is serving one another, regardless of your position in the society, regardless of how you are taught, or how noble you are. That is, how the service in the Lord's kingdom should be Kahit ano pa yan, kadumi. Kahit ano pa yan, kahirap. Kahit ano pa yan, kadigrim. Basta, trabaho para sa Panginoon. Ginagawa and become one of the greatest in the kingdom of God. And you see, Apostle Paul, grabe ang kanong persecution sa kanya. Meron akong pitching na ganyan eh, kung paano siya talaga kaghirap sa ibang hiliyo ng Panginoon Yesu Cristo. Kung gaano niya pinersecute ang church, ganun din siya pinersecute. Diba? Ng mga kalaban, pero tuloy-tuloy pa rin siya. 
Oh, kasi naiintindihan niya yung true service. True service in the kingdom of God. Nagpapasalamat pa siya sa lahat ng kanyang mga uh, paghihirap. Eh. At nagkaroon siya ng share in the suffering, ministry of the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pangatlo, mga mahal kong kapatid, hanggang tatulong naman ang ating main division para one. The Bible tells us that faith, hope, and love will remain forever. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. Go back. But the greatest of this is His love. Napakaganda. Kaya sinabi na po sa Pablo, kahit na magsilbi ka, kahit na magdonate ka, kahit na magpakahambol ka, kahit na ikaw pa yung talagang isakripisyo na lahat ng katawan mo o whatever, pero kung wala kang pag-ibig, walang kwenta lahat ng ginagawa mo. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. Uh, we will start from chapter uh, verse 8 to 13. Uh, kung gusto mo yung uh, chapter 1, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 to 13, para buong po na yan. So, sayang, sayang, sayang yung sakripisyo mo kung walang pag-ibig, sabi nga. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 to 13. Ayan. 2 to 13, sayang na sayang, sabi niya. That's why we could see that the Lord Jesus Christ showed to us how to love one another. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 1, Behold, sabi niya, how wonderful to know how the Father loves us. Behold. Behold what manner of us. I mean, may some time na ganun, di ba? Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us that we shall be, that we shall be called the Son of God. The Son. Yung word doon, paano bakit ganun ang expression ni John, the writer of the book of John, no? First John. Bakit ganun? Because he was the one who was called the beloved apostle of the Lord. Naintindihan niya lahat ng mga sinasabi ng Panginoon. Siya pa yung, nung pinagkanoon siya ni Judas, doon sa last uh, supper nila, siya pa yung nakalim, na nakahiga sa balikat ng Panginoon, na nagsasabi na sino ba yung Panginoon, sino ba yung magkakanulo sa iyo. At nagsabi, nagsabi ang Panginoon sa Kristo, yung buwan, uh, magkakanulo sa akin yung magdidip ng tinapay, hindi ko yung tinapay sa kanyang saro, saro ko sa ka. Uh, yun, naunawali niya yun. Naunawali niya ni John because John was the beloved apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nasa inner side of man. Paano ba? Si John din ang nagsulat ng John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have His everlasting life. Here, the expression of loving is in being. There is no other expression, mahirap eh, na express kung wala kang binibigay sa iyong mahal, paano ma-express ang iyong pag-ibig o uh, pagmamahal o love, di ba? Kahit yung time mo na lang, ay wala akong time. Hindi ko nang pagmamahal. Alibawa, worship service, ay wala akong time dyan. Paano ma-express ang pagmamahal mo sa Panginoon? Di ba? We will not come here because we are obligated to come here. No, no, no. I don't believe that. We come here because we love God. We obey not because we are afraid to be cast into hell. No, no. We believe and obey God because we love Him. Yan ang talaga eh. Wala namang pinaka-importante sa buhay natin eh. Kundi yung we demonstrate our love because God first loved us. Kung naunawa natin yan, how we sacrifice when we love someone. Wala na eh, wala. Alibawa, nung nililigawan ko si Nancy, uh, wala na ako pabili ng buwan eh, ng pagkain ko, bibili pa ako ng roast. So, magkano nga yung roast mo? Ano yung roast mo? Isuyate. 
Kristo. Pagkakain na ko, ay daw ha. Pagkakain na ko, hinahati ko 'yan. Tapos pag nakita ko siya, inabot ko. Ito yung kahapon ako sabi ko na hamburger. Hindi na lang kita na ako, hindi hati tayo sa iyo. Kahapon ka yun. Basta, binigay ko pa rin sa kanya. Hati eh. O diba? Tapos, mangga. Pagkita kami sa pan. Babay po study kami. May mga mangga sa taan. Hindi nahulog yung mga bunga. O sinisimot namin ng mga pibisyan. May bag kami eh. Pagkatapos, sinishare namin sa mga pan. Pibisyan dyan sa ano. Pagkita kami sa... Ayan. Sa tublay. Yung mga kapatiran doon, magbibigay ng saging. Magbibigay ng saging, mga pan, gulay. Pagkita din sa BBC. Share, share. Ayan. Those are the expression that we love one another. The greatest in my kingdom, according to the Lord Jesus Christ, is the one who serves and the one who humbles himself with love. Greater love has no one than this that a man lay down his life for his friend. Sabi ng Panginoon. Hindi naman natin, hindi naman nire-require ng Panginoon na mamatay tayo sa ating mga mahal sa buhay. Di ba? Ang gusto niya lang upang silbihan. At saka, the Lord Jesus Christ set the standard of how to love one another. In the Old One, in the Old Testament, ito kasi eh, when one of the lawyer asked the Lord Jesus Christ, oh, what is the greatest commandment? Sabi ng Panginoon Yeso Cristo eh, Love God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your soul. And love your neighbor as yourself. That is the greatest commandment. Pero binago ng Panginoon ang standard niyan. Hindi na yan na yun ang standard ng love. What? Totoo? Although, sinabi niya doon sa kwan, love God with all your heart. Remain. That's correct. Pero yung number two, binago niya. Ang sabi niya, di ba? Love your neighbor as yourself. Sabi niya, sabi niya, hindi na yan. Paano na ngayon? Basahin natin ang John chapter 13 verse 34. John chapter 13 verse 34. Ito na yung standard. A new commandment. I am giving you. Bagong batas. Bago? Ang love ba ay utos ng Old Testament? Yes. Ibagit ito, love na naman ang utos. Ibago na naman. Hindi na luluma. Bago kasi ibang bibel. Ibang standard. Hindi na love your neighbor as yourself. Hindi na. You love your neighbor as I love you. Sabi ng Panginoon. Sino ang panong? Sino ang pattern? Yung sarili mo. Tama? Ang pattern na yun, hindi na sarili natin. Ang Panginoon si Kristo. Kung paano na tayo binahal. Kasi kung sarili lang natin, Meron tayong ano eh, ah, uh, bias eh. Hindi oh, mo ako mahal eh. Eh, hindi rin kita mahal. Oo, oh, diba? Oh, Ganun ang tanong nilang sis akin naman eh. Kung mahal mo pa ako, mahal pa rin kita. <laughs> <laughs> kung di issue na, <laughs> kung di mo na ako mahal, eh, tapos na, hindi pa natin, pinag-usapan. Ganun lang. Tao kasi. Pero kung Diyos, hindi eh. Kahit hindi mo na siya mahal, mahal ka pa rin niya. Hindi hindi tayo kanyang bumalik. The expression of the love of God is is pictured or described in the prodigal son parable. Oh, may anak siya. Dalawa. Yung isa. Kinuha niya na lahat ng mana niya. Buhay pa ang tatay niya. Insulto sa tatay niya yun. Insulto. Buhay pa ang tatay mo. Tapos lahat ng mamanahin ko, bigyan mo na sa akin. <laughs> Oh. Parang pinapanalangin ko na ba? mamatay. Anong gusto mong mayayari sa akin? Gusto mo na ako mamatay? Kuha ko siguro ang tatay mo. Hindi po pwede. Gusto mo ako mamatay? So, parang gusto mo na ako mamatay. Ah. Parang kunin mo na lahat ng kwan ko. Ah. Walang parents na magbibigay ng ganyan. Tama? Yung tatay kong na nga eh. Hintayin nyo akong mamatay. Sabi niya. Kung namatay siya, binigay ng kapatid ko yung titulo ng lupa. 
na para sa amin. Para walang away, away lahat kami may titulong. Madaling yung tatay ko eh. Pinatitulong niya lahat. Yung mga kapatid kong babae, kawawa, kasi hindi nila gusto yung pwesto nila. Kayo, <laughs> eh, parang nakatitulong na eh. Siyempre, yung kapatid kong punso, dahil siya pinakamalapit sa tatay ko, yung nakatitulong sa kanya, yung may bahay na. Hindi, <laughs> 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 wala ka magagawa. Nakatitulong na eh. O tatay, bigyan mo sa akin lahat ng kayamanan na para sa akin pag namatay ka na. Ibinigay ng tatay. And then the son went out and he squandered the money and his life And then, nawala na lahat ng pera. And then, gutom na siya, wala na siyang friends. Minsan, nagkakaroon tayo ng mga kaibigan dahil sa pera o pag-aari natin. Ayun ang pagmamahal. Pagmamahal na ano? Sa salapi at material, di ba? Narealize po, pag walang wala ka na, wala ka ng kaibigan. <laughs> kaibigan niyo lang, mga baboy. At least, hindi nagko-complain. O yung mga baboy, kumakain, hindi wala siyang makain. Di ba siya nagsweldo eh? Tagawa ang pagkain lang siya ng baboy, hindi ba siya nagsweldo, wala siyang makain. Nahiya siya sa boss niya. Magtrabaho ka muna, bago mo nagsweldo. No work, no pay, sabi ng boss. May gutom na gutom na siya eh. Anong gagawin ko? Kumakain siya pagkain ng baboy. And then, narealize niya sa pagkain ng tatay. Eh, yung mga tauhan mo, hindi pa nagtrabaho, kumain niya. Ang sasarap ka. And then, he decided, resolved himself to return back to his father. While he was still very uh, away, his father was looking to that road every day for the return of his son. That is how God's love is manifested. The expression of God's love is, the Lord God is always waiting for us when we don't like Him anymore. He still loves us. That's why, when the Lord Jesus Christ was about to Uh, ascend in heaven, he asked Simon Peter, Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. If you love me, sabi ng Parinon, you feed my sheep. You feed my sheep. Tapos, tinanong na naman siya. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Yung pangatlong tanong, tinanong ulit siya. Parehas na naman ang sagot. Pero bakit tinanong pa ulit-ulit? Ang dali lang naman kasi magsabi eh, mahal mo ba ako? Mahal Ang dali lang eh, di ba? <laughs> Pero nung pangatlo na, tinamaan na si Pedro, umiyak na siya. Alam mo pa rin yung gano'n yung kamahal. That is now the expression of the agape love. Talagang total na lang sa isa sa premisyo ni Pedro. Hindi na basta-basta ang pagmamahal lang sa pamagitan ng salita. We can tell God that we love Him. We can tell our brothers and sisters that we love them in words, but not in deed. The Lord God wants us, not only in words, but in deed, but also in deed. Brothers and sisters, In Romans chapter 5 verse 8. The Lord Jesus Christ demonstrated His love. God's love is demonstrated through the death of His Son, Jesus Christ. That the Lord Jesus Christ died first. While we were yet sinners. That is what we call unconditional love. Hindi niya sinabi, oh, magbagong buhay ka muna bago ako mamatay para sa iyo. Hindi. Namatay muna siya para makapagbagong buhay ka. Automatic, dahil magbagong buhay ka, susunod ka sa utos niya, and that's the time. Okay? You are reconciled with him. Brothers and sisters, this is the message today. All of us have this desire to become excellent. To become Great. Kahit ako rin. Isa sa mga pangarap ko eh, matulungan lahat ng mga churches eh, magtatayo ng mag, mga, mga, ano, mga building para sa mga, mga, mga nagre-rent ng mga churches. Isa sa mga pangarap ko yan. Amen! Oh, oh, oh. Kaya kung minsan nagtatanong kayo, bakit palagi ako sa Alaminos? Alaminos? Alaminos, di ba? Nagtitext kayo, Brad, is kayo ka, pwede ba sa ganito na? 
Ay, nasaalim ninyo sa crowd. Eh, nag-reflex din lang doon. Reflex ako. Oo. Oh. Okay, tapos, eh, ito lang. May kwento ko lang kunti. Eh, may nagsabi kasi doon na may treasure doon doon sa lupa ko. Kaya, bukay na natin para makapagpunta, makapagpunta yung mga preaching at saka matulungan yung mga nangangailangan. Sabi ko eh. At saka makapagpatay yung mga kwan. May hirap din tayong television sa kwan. Na, bibili tayo ng television station. Mga gano'n. Eh, kung totoo, ano? Kaya, yun, di ba na naman ko? Ay, wala na naman kapag hindi ko. Pero hindi ba natin alam? Simple lang. Pero, hopefully, kung meron, di meron. Kung wala, di wala na. But still, we continue to serve. We continue to, ano, oh, yun. So, what are the characteristics that the Lord God wants us to be? To become one of the greatest in His kingdom. Number one is to humble ourselves. Just like the Lord Jesus Christ, He does not complain. O diba? Nagre-request lang siya, nung mamamatay niya siya, malapit siyang mamatay, diba nag-pray siya? Panginoon, kung mama, sabi niya, kung po pwede, ilayo mo sa akin yung kamatayan. Kung po pwede lang, please let this come pass from me. Kung po pwede lang, but your will be done. Ganon katindi ang kanyang pagkakampol. Secondly, gusto ng Panginoong Diyos na tayo ay magsilbi sa Kanya at sa ating kapwa-tao. Yung ating pagsisilbi ay lubos-lubos. Oo. Yung ating pagsisilbi ay taos-puso. Yung ating pagsisilbi ay hindi dahil may ambisyon tayo, mayroon tayong motibo na tayo ay magkaroon ng posisyon na katulad nila James and John. Gusto nila magsilbi pero gusto nila may posisyon. Oo, oh, wala ah. Hindi, di ba? Hindi ganun. At ang pang tatakatlo, ang gusto ng Panginoon na maging karakter natin ay ating ginagawa lahat ng bagay dahil mahal natin siya at mahal natin ang ating mga kapatiran tulad ng pagmamahal niya sa atin. Maraming salamat. still sa message. Pagkatapos nito ay tawagin natin si Brother Richard para sa ating closing prayer. You are my all in all. Ayun po natin. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I see. You are my
Tayo po yung manalangin. Kama namin Diyos na makapangyarihan sa lahat. Kami po yung nagpapasalamat sa kanibagong buhay na binigay mo sa amin sa araw na ito. Maraming salamat po Panginoon na kami ay nagkaroon ng opportunity na pasalamat sa iyo sa mga lahat ng bagay. Salamat po sa mga salitang amin narinig. Salamat po sa paggamit mo kay na Brother Ed Valencia at kay Brother Ed Bacani upang ipangaral ang iyong mga salita. Naway, gabayan mo po kami at uh, ito yung magamit namin sa aming pang-araw-araw na buhay bilang isang kano. Lord, bago po namin kami uh, sa aming pagsamantalang pagkahiwa-hiwalay at umuwi sa aming mga tahanan, gabayan mo po kami. Sana'y uh, patawarin mo po kami sa aming mga nagawang kasalanan at encourage mo rin po kami na kami maging mapagpatawad din po sa mga nagkasala sa amin. Ito po aming samot na langin sa pangalan ni Jesus, aming Panginoon at Akapagligtas. Eusebio Tanikala yan, sa A Hill Church of Christ. Sila po ang host uh, this month of uh, September. At kung sino po yung may ka-couple, sino may ka-partner, may asawa, or may balat, mag-asawa, may mag-attend po kayo dito sa ating uh, couples fellowship. Ayan. At uh, tuloy pa rin po yung ating broadcast through radio sa WDWLY. At meron po tayong podcast ano po, sa MixLR.com every 8 hanggang sa 11 ko ng gabi. MixLR.com slash rescue broadcast or pwede ko yung uh, uh, pwede nyo i-visit yung ating website sa rescuebroadcast.weebly.com at pinupost po natin doon kung napansin nyo po meron tayong uh, re-record natin yung ating worship. In-upload, in-upload po natin doon sapagkat uh, yung mga brethren, ano, yung mga members ng NLEX na, na nandun na sa iba't ibang bansa, no? Ayan sa Australia, ayan sa iba't ibang lugar na po, no? So, uh, in-upload po natin yan para nang sa garunay na pakinggan po rin siya para mag-asama pa rin tayo. <laughs> I-visit niyo po yung ating uh, website sapagkat uh, araw-araw po yan dahil meron, meron tayong in-update, mga pictures, mga missions. At uh, meron ba tayong baptism ba? Wala na. May, mamaya. Mamaya. Ayan. So hopefully, ano? Ayan. Ma- BBS muna ba? Kaya gusto tayo muna or diretso na? Diretso na. Ayan. So meron po tayong baptism mamaya. Siguro after lunch. Alauna. Alauna. Ayan. At uh, si Sister Jigga. Si Sister... Juhi. Juhi. Ayan. So yes. siya po yung magpapabaptize mamaya. And then, uh, ano spend din po natin? Ano po? Uh, yung pong darating na... Tawag dito. Uh, Kapos Arcapella, ayun po, pinag-usapan po natin yan. Uh, yung po ating uh, darating po na mga, tawag dito sa ating uh, mix LR, ano po, yung ating po mga schedules, ano po, sapagkat pinag-usapan na namin na uh, dapat start siya ng 8 hanggang sa 11 ng gabi. 8 na kumbaga hanggang sa 11 ng gabi. So, uh, pag-create yung po yung uh, mix LR natin para nang sa ganun po ay magpapagulit tayo to reach out 
dun sa mga brethren ano po, at saka dun sa mga tao na hindi pa nakapakilig ng salita ng Diyos. Meron po pa tayong announcement? Birthdays? Birthdays? Wala? Meron pa tayong announcement? Wala na ba? Yan, si ano? Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Sino? Sino? Ay, gusto po. Announcement. Um, joint care group po ng UIT. Um, kami po mag-host uh, this September 19 from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. po sa Midtown Church of Christ. Sama kami dyan, YP. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Young at Hearts. Ayan. So, ayan po. Meron po silang uh, YP sa September. Kailan yun? 19. 19. Ayan po, 5 p.m. Ayan. So, mga white piece. Diba? Ayan. Kung usapan nyo yan. <coughs> Punta tayo doon. Ayan. At uh, kasama natin sila. Sino ang pangalan nito? Pakilala mo nga, Kapitan. Si Ate Kendra. Si Ate Kendra. Ayan. 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 Ate Kendra, uh, nababtize last week. Ito okay. so, yung mga hindi nyo na-meet kung last Sunday sa pagkat umuwi sila. Diba? Ayan. Bisita natin sila Charity. Ah, dyan sila si Charity. Charity. Tsaka si Monty. Tsaka si Von. Mga taga Ifugao. Taga Ifugao. Sa Lagawe, Lagawe. Lagawe, Lagawe Church. Oo. Ayan, meron pa tayo mga visitors? Sino pong first time dito? Yan ako si... Ayan. Anong pangalan mo bro? Ezra. Welcome sa Index. Meron pa pa tayo sa mga visitors. Uh, ano pa ka sister? Angelica. Angelica. Angelica yung nanag-inip. <laughs> Angelica's testimony. <laughs> Ayan, so, sa driving, ay sa van, ay, sa van rentals, announce din natin yung ating van rentals. Kung meron po kayong nakilala na nangailangan ng van, uh, gusto mag-travel at mag-travel Manila, o kaya gusto mag-tour at kailangan ng uh, transportation na Ano po, meron po tayong van at meron po yung kasabang wifi. Kaya meron po din tayong uh, church na. Paki, ano nga? Gusto po para sa ating Gano? church na. Yeah? Oh. Pag Manila, ano yun? 7-5. Yeah. Pag Manila, 8,000 diba? 8,000. 7-5 na lang. 7-5 na lang. Oh, may discount na. 7-5 na lang. May ano ko? May refund ako. Oh, may refund ako. Oh, may refund ako. Ang tao pa lang driver. Basta kilala namin po. Meron pa tayong announcement sa ladies? Lumitin kayo? Wala. Wala. Ayan po. So, happy Lord's Day po sa ating hapon. Alas tres ang hapon. Alas tres ang hapon. Mamaya. Ay ate, tumabot ka. Sister Faye! Mga madaling na ito, Sister Faye. Sister Faye. Sister Faye. Sister Faye. Sister Faye. Sister Faye. 